who is dropped from the Indian cricket team and who gets a special farewell at the Lords, which is a new milestone that women's cricket across the globe have achieved and how our team's gearing up for the T20 World Cup. Are you curious about all of this? That's what I'm here for. Welcome to another episode of the Weekly Briefings and I'm your host Chandini, here to give you all the top news from women's cricket across the globe. So let's get to it right away. The ICC introduces the first ever Women's Future Tours program. The International Cricket Council has announced a Women's Future Tours program until 2025. This is the first one that has ever been created. The highlights of this program are confirmed fixtures from this year up until 2025. In this period, there will be a total of 300 international matches that will be played amongst the women cricket teams across the globe. There will be seven tests in total, 135 one-day international matches and 159 T20 international matches. There will also be a standalone women's only Ashes between Australia and England in 2025. ICC's general manager of cricket celebrated this moment, advocating that this program not only lends certainty to the future tours of cricket, but also sets a base for a structure that is sure to grow in the coming years. Well, keep the good news coming in is all that we can say. Chulan Goswami Jamima Rodriguez returned to the ODI squad while Kiran Nagire gets a T20 call. India will face England in three T20s and three ODIs between September 10th to September 24th. For this, veteran pacer Julan Goswami has been recalled in India's ODI squad along with Jamima Rodriguez and Dayalan Hemalaka. Kiran Navgire is called in for the T20 squad, which is her first time for India across all formats. India have dropped Yasmika Bhatia and Harleen Deol and have instead included Simran Bahadur and Racha Ghosh in the T20 squad. Leading the women in blue, as always, is Harmat Kaur, assisted by Smriti Mandana. Chulan Goswami is set to play farewell match at the Lords. Continuing with the news about Team India, the BCCI has declared that the final ODI at the Lords will be the farewell game for pacer Julan Goswami. Julan has been the face of women's cricket ever since one can remember, and she's set to retire from international cricket at the end of the England series. From her 201 ODIs, Goswami has picked up 252 wickets at an average of just about 22. Chilan Goswami has been a true stalwart of cricket and this farewell is most certainly a special way to celebrate her glorious career. West Indies are going to host New Zealand for an 8-match limited over series starting September 16 up until October 6. The series will start with three ODIs progressing to five T20s which will all be played at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua. The three ODIs will be a part of the ICC Women's Championship and will mark the debut of New Zealand and West Indies in the 2022-25 cycle. Heather Knight undergoes surgery, will miss India series as well as the Women's Big Bash League. Unfortunately, England's skipper Heather Knight is going to be missing from action for some time more. She has undergone a surgery for a hip injury that she sustained during the South African series and took to Twitter to announce her absence from the Indian series as well as the Women's Big Bash League. Having missed the latter part of the South African series and the 100 as well, Knight is hoping to be back in action by the end of this year. During her absence, Natalie Skiver has been taking charge of the team. However, going forward, the team management has not made any official announcement about Knight's replacement. So our guesses are that Skiver will continue holding the reins. Mary Ann Musanda to captain Zimbabwe in the T20 World Cup qualifier. Marianne Musanda will lead Zimbabwe's squad in the ICC Women's T20 World Cup qualifier that will be held in UAE from September 18th to September 25th. Zimbabwe's ongoing preparations include a tour to South Africa at the end of August, where they will play five T20 matches against South Africa's emerging women's team, and then a quadrangular series in UAE against Team UAE, Team Thailand, and USA early September. That brings us to the end of the week's briefings. Feel free to visit our website to get detailed scores or more information. And don't forget to share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. See you all next week.